Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Peter Truick and today we'll be going through a full pull workout. We've had the pre-workout about 15 minutes ago, so yeah, the face is on fire, the arms are on fire, and we'll get cracking. Right, so before we start, I'm gonna hit a bit of a warm up to get the rotator cuff firing. So starting off, elbows nice and tucked in and just rotating outwards. We don't wanna snap the band in half for this one. We're gonna keep it nice and relaxed, just activating rather than strengthening. And just a couple of these to get everything firing, then up into a 90 degree, same thing, external rotation, not trying to snap the band in half. It's a nice cue to watch yourself in a mirror. There's a mirror behind you guys, so I'll be watching that. I just tend to do five or six reps on pull day. On a push day, I'll do it a bit more intensely just because the importance of shoulder stability for your pushing movements is gonna be a bit higher and I've had that shoulder injury, so. Similar thing here, banded pull apart, nice upward angle, pulling down just below the sternum. And I tend to go just until I feel the muscles switching on for this one. I don't wanna fatigue them too much on pull day. Brilliant, so first set we're gonna do pull-ups. Today I'll do a wide grip variant, um, just cause I don't have a nice weight belt here, so I can't weight them up, so I'll make it a bit harder by going wide grip. And I'm also trying out these for the first time, lifting figure eights, and we'll see how they feel. Um, hopefully they'll feel all right. I do like the lifting straps, but I thought why not try something new. So we're going to some wide grip pull-ups. Nice filter right for first set, good warm up. I think I still have to get used to these. I don't feel as good as I do with the lifting straps, but that's only the first set, so we'll see how we go. Righty, so second set, I had a bit of a play between sets and I think I need to grip the bar and not hold on to the material like you would for the lifting strap, so we'll give that a try. And we'll get going again, wide grip pull-ups. All I have to say, it's a much quicker setup. And that does feel quite locked in now. I'm really focusing on scapular control, so not trying to let my shoulder blades drop like I did on that rep and just try to keep them locked in. And then when I start feeling them going, then I end the set. Alrighty, so last set we moved because that TRX is unmovable. So what we'll do, we'll go see how wide we can go on this one and just push the failure with some partials with good scap mechanics. And then we'll let the scapula go and give us that momentum. Oh, oh they'll lock me in there, but they feel quite nice. I quite like the feeling. It feels a bit different to the lifting wraps, but in a good way. All right, so we're onto a chest supported row. I quite like doing the chest supported. I'd say play around with the different grip widths and all of that. And I like to do them single arm just because I feel a bit more of a squeeze and I can try and switch those muscles on at the back of my mind better with a single arm versus a double arm. And towards the end of the rep, you can add in slight rotation to try and get your elbow back and behind to get more squeeze on the lats at the last bit. Try not to initiate the movement with a twist, but you can finish the movement with a twist. So we've gone back to the straps for this one just because you need a bit more bar for the figure eight. So anything with a handle, recommend the straps. And always try and match the strong arm to the weak arm, start off with the weak arm. And to the person who decided to put rubber grips on machines in the gym, they just rotate, really. Right, we'll see you in the next one. Righty, so not too focused on rep ranges again. I'm looking to fail at around the eight rep with some partials, not because it's a miracle rep range, but anywhere training to failure or one to two reps to failure from failure is optimum. So it doesn't matter if you do 25 reps or if you do three reps, there's not much difference in muscle, muscle gain. Oh, I really don't like these rubber things that just twist. You can never grip onto them properly. Probably my biggest pet peeve in gyms.
and really try and use your brain to squeeze your lats, squeeze your rhomboids, squeeze all the muscles on the back. Alrighty, last set on this one. So you're gonna go to failure and then some partials in the stretch position. Oh, let me change the weight. Almost went a bit light there. And then we can cheat it. <laughs> and use some momentum. I really feel this machine in my rear delts. I'm not feeling much in the way of lats, probably because I'm compensating. What's just the angle of it? Um, but it is the only chest supported machine in the gym, so. But we're not feeling too much in the lats. A lot in my rear delts. And they're just trying to match the weak side of the strong side. Nice, we'll head over to some face pulls, but not how you expect to see them. Right, so what we do next is some face pulls on the TRX. This is probably my favorite variant of a face pull because of the strength curve. So if we think about it, if you're using a cable, you attach it either 90 degrees or slightly up and angle your body, but it's roughly at 90 degrees to your movement. So at the start of the movement where the movement's the easiest, the weight is, or where the movement's the easiest, the weight is the lightest. And at the end of the movement, when you're at the back at 90 degrees to the cable, where the movement is the hardest, the weight is also the hardest. Where the TRX comes into it is because it uses gravity and your body weight for the resistance, at the start position over there, that is the hardest point of the whole rep. And right there, you're getting some rear delt movement, you're getting all of the, the stronger muscles in the back pulling it. And at the end of the movement where you're more upright there's not that much tension so you can really enforce that external rotation and get a bit more rotator cuff activation so really good variant if you have a trx or rings or anything like that definitely give this a try and then when you Get fatigued like I've just done. You can make it lighter by taking a step back. Try not to yank yourself up so there's no tension at the top. Really focus on keeping that backward lean. So there's still tension at the top. And that's rear delt and cuffs ride. Right, we'll do three sets of those and then we'll catch you on some rear delt flies. Alrighty, so onto some straight arm scapular strength. Really overlooked part of train, but definitely hit it. It's one of the functions of your back, so don't forget this one. I've been trying to go as heavy as I can with this, um, just because I think it'll carry over to my front lever. So calisthenics, virtually a bodyweight version of this, but a lot more difficult. And again, think about where your shoulder blades are and keeping them as stable as you can. And don't go from a bent arm to a straight arm. You can have a slight bend in your arms, but make sure that bend stays fixed. Otherwise, you're just combining this into a tricep exercise. You can probably load it up a bit more in the next set. So for my last set of straight arm scapular strength or straight arm pull downs, I'm going to do the body weight variant in a front lever raise, but obviously I can't do tuck front lever raise. I can't do front lever raises, so I'm going to do tuck front lever or try to advance tuck. Nice cue for this one is try and bend the bar inwards to activate your shoulder stabilizers. And you'll see 
the movement's very similar to a straight on pull down. Control the way down. Oh. Oh. And that is a lot more difficult than any straight on pull down you'll do. Whew. So for your rear delt flies, it doesn't matter if you protract it with the shoulder blades or retract it with the shoulder blades, but whatever position you pick, try to keep them there. So it takes out your rhomboids from the movement. I quite like a retracted position there, and then I can try and keep them as still as possible. So last exercise for the day, we're gonna do four sets of barbell curls um, standing. Now, I don't advise doing them in the squat rack, but this gym only has up to 30 kilograms like bars that you can go and mess around with there that aren't in the squat rack. So yeah, we're gonna to have to do some bicep curls in the squat rack. We're only doing one set of biceps because on Sundays we do a full arm day and it's only Tuesday today, so we don't need to go too crazy. The Friday session will probably go a bit harder on the arms. Alrighty. And we're gonna do as many as we can, clean, and then some cheats. Never go beyond the vertical when you're cheating. So cheat from a forward position up to a neutral position. Alrighty, so pull day done and dusted. I really enjoyed that session. I always find throwing in the TRX is really nice, especially when I'm at a different gym to my home gym. So I'm at my girlfriend's house for this week because we've got the week off on annual leave. So we get to use this facility, which is really nice. Um, and the TRX is something slightly different. So I highly recommend giving those TRX face pulls a try. They really do hit different. A quick update on how I found the wrap versus the figure eight. I really like the figure eight when it comes to using a bar. I find that you need that little bit more space because you have to grip next to it that a lot of the handles on the machines or even if you just use the handle attachment on the cable doesn't have enough space to use this so more versatility go for the wrap rather than the figure eight but i do like the locked in feeling the figure eight does give you as far as using these over not using these if you find that you're just starting out then don't use them because you won't be using heavy enough weights where your forearms will be the limiting factor. If your forearms are limiting how much weight that you can pull or that you can hold on to with a deadlift or anything like that, then start implementing the wraps rather than going straight out the bat for them. Another thing that I like with them is that it does take your mind off of the forearm. So if you're not gripping as tight, you can focus your brain on the muscles that you're trying to target and therefore you can get a better activation with them. Now there's not much on mind muscle connection versus hypertrophy, but I do like to feel the muscles I'm targeting. Alrighty, so if you do decide to use wraps, do exercises like dead hangs to train your forearms and you can also throw in some scapular stability while you're at it. Brilliant, right? If you like the video, please smash that thumbs up button down below and leave a comment if you like videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and until then, we'll see you in the next one.